our coverage of the World Championship here in Taipei from the international wildcard team Dark Passage. I'm happy to be joined by Nauru, uh, their mid laner. First up, Nauru, I'd like to ask you what it's been like to travel halfway across the world here to Taipei and meet and interact with all those amazing players. Evet, dünyanın öbür tarafından Taipei'ye yolculuk yapmak nasıldı ve bütün bu hayran olduğun ya da izlediğin oyuncularla beraber oynamak nasıldı? E, yolculuk tabii ki çok zevkliydi. E, hayran oldum ve birçok ünlü oyuncuyla beraber oynamak, aynı yerde bulunmak çok eğlenceli. E, gerçekten çok zevkli zamanlar geçiriyoruz. Öyle. Uh, travel was very good and I'm very happy to be here because I meet all the players and teams that I love, love to watch and that's why I really enjoy my time in here. Yeah, and you get to play versus players that you've maybe seen on, on, on the screens all over the world. So even though you guys haven't won a game yet, I do add, what is the main thing you've picked up from playing versus them? Eee, şu ana kadar henüz herhangi bir galibiyet almamış olsanız dahi, onlara karşı oynamaktan ne kazandınız? Eee, bilmediğimiz ne kadar çok şeyin olduğunu öğrendik. Eee, bunları da ileriki maçlarda uygulamayı planlıyoruz. Uh, we learned that... Uh, we learned that we don't know uh, we learned many things that we don't know and in future matches we will try to add this in our repertoire yeah you of course have matches to go here and then you go back to turkey which you dominated the scene over there last year how does the experience here set you up to maybe do that again evet geçtiğimiz yıl her şeyi domine ettiniz şimdi buradaki bu tecrübeniz size nasıl yansıyacak ve gelecek yılda aynısını yapabileceğinizi düşünüyor musun Ee, geçtiğimiz yıllarda domine etme sebebimiz iyi olmamızdı. Burada daha çok şey öğrenip daha iyi olduk ve domine etmeye devam etmeyi planlıyoruz. Uh, in last years we dominated the Turkish scene because we were really good uh, compared to other teams in Turkey. And this year we came to Worlds, we learned too many things and this will help us to dominate more in Turkey. All right. Well, I hope you dominate a couple of games coming up here. It's a pleasure to have you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, to get us ready for our last match, let's check in with the guys at the desk. Thank you very much, Shucks. I think we're going to call it the think tank from now on. Okay. Anyways, China's Edward Gaming and AHQ Esports Club from the GPL are loading into our final game of the day. I want to talk about these two mid laners because I think both of these teams do uh, somewhat rely on their mid lane champions. It is, of course, going to be Westor on the side of AHQ. It's going to be you, the opposite side. Probably you are most knowledgeable on the mid lane. What do you think about these two players? Hmm. I think Yu is probably the best Orianna that we've seen so far, which is pretty significant considering everyone's played Orianna at some point. Um, but so far they are very support-oriented mid lanes coming from their side with Yu. And AHQ I think has an advantage here. They have a much more flexible mid laner who has a lot of pocket picks, and that's going to draw a lot of bans or just a lot of threats because they get purple side this game as AHQ. So all mid lanes that are, you know, quote unquote safe are no longer safe with the counter pick. Yeah, and it's going to be, I think, really important that Westor does well individually. I think he is a phenomenally skilled player in his own right, and I think we're going to see a lot of action come out of him. And I really think that the mid lane is sort of a microcosm of the game as a whole in that AHQ, I think, needs to step up early, play something aggressive, get the early game going well. It's been shown as a weakness of Edward Gaming and a fairly decent strength of AHQ. And a guy I also want to highlight about this is Green T, the support. Because the best player, and the most important player by far in Edward Gaming, is Name. And Name lost lane due to Mata doing so well on Samsung White. And just like Mata did, I need to see Green T do just as well and crush that bottom lane. And that's the hope for AHQ if they want to make it out of this group. He's going to need a hyperbolic time chamber for that one. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think two days are, is enough to <laughs> fix that problem. Uh, people people in Korea have been trying to be Mata for a long time. Sure, I've been trying to be Mata yet. for my entire life. <laughs> it's not working, boys. All right, let's talk a little bit. AHQ, they tried something drastic yesterday against Samsung White. Uh, they went for that all-in. It got red by Samsung White. It didn't work out. Crepo, do you expect something similar here, or are they going to try to channel their inner Mata or their inner game-changing ability? I mean, I think if you're facing off against a better team, as said before, for numerous times on the desk. The best plan is to get an aggressive level 1 team. However, that doesn't mean you have to cheese your like level 1 play because if you get telegraphed there and you'll just lose the game by getting aced, that's yeah. a little bit too much. But I expect aggressive lanes, aggressive junglers. Um, I don't think they'll swap. They'll just try and somehow make a play and snowball the lead off that. Uh, probably point it out, maybe just get an early dragon somewhere. Maybe, but yeah. 
Well, let's see who you guys think is actually going to be predicting to win this matchup. Gaze into those crystal balls and give me some names. Crepa, I want you to start us off. Who's going to pick up the win and why? Um, not AHQ, sadly enough. <laughs> Why? Why? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sadly enough, was the reason it's because of a Mumu. Why? Uh, because they're just simply not up to par. I think the only the only difference could be West Door outplaying you in mid lane, but other than that, they're just outmatched everywhere else. Probably AHQ or EDG. I do have faith in the mid lane carry, and I think West Door is going to carry AHQ this game and dominate you. All right. Next on my line is Freak. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Edward Gaming. Edward Gaming are just stronger overall. There's a chance for HQ, but I'm playing the odds here, and I'm going to say EDG. And finally, Monte Cristo is a clean sweep. Uh, yeah, I'm saying EDG as well. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really, they are the favorites coming in here. It's hard to go against it. And hey, man, I got to keep up my perfect predictions so far. Oh, Monty, yes, EDG took yeah. out Dark <laughs> Passage earlier today. We'll see if they can do it again to HQ over on LLEsports.com. You guys, the fans are calling this game also for Edward Gaming with 76% of the vote. All right, with that, let's send it over to the caster desk where Edward Gaming and HQ are heading into the lobby with the casters. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and let's check out the starting lineups as we get right into it. Spawning on the blue side, it's Edward Gaming from China's LPL. That means in the top lane, it's Koro. Jungling is Clear Love. It's you in the mid lane, Name at AD Carry, and supporting him as usual, that's ZZF. And on the red side, of course, is the GPL's AHQ Esports Club. Pride's in the top lane, Nas in the jungle. Star player West Door in the mid lane, Garnet Devil on AD Carry, and of course, Green Tea on support. Definitely support plays to be coming out in this one. We Big saw plays. Green Tea already. We know FZZF can make some plays, so that's going to be a sweet lane to be watching. We actually heard the analyst that's talking a little bit about it. Yeah, so we might see AHQ have the same approach to the game as we saw yesterday. Just try and pick some champions yeah. where you can snowball again. The Blitzcrank was pretty good from Green Tea. He had some good hooks. He had uh, the kill. The one kill yeah. on Blitzcrank. The level one from the Blitzcrank was a little bit disastrous. Sure, true, but that's yeah. also like a team effort. I mean, yeah. it's not only that the Blitzcrank saying, follow me, guys, not solo queue right here. But you do have to invade on Blitzcrank solo queue every yes. single game. True. Well, let's see what they have for each other here in picks and bans. AHQ could make a very big move here, but the odds stacked against them. That's going to be the first one out. The question is, is Edward Gaming just going to ban West Door completely? Fizz, Zed, and maybe even Swiss, yes. Swisted Fate? And oh, no. No, Whoa. they're not. They're not switching up here. Still, Zed Ooh. is West Door's, one of West Door's many fantastic champions, and one of the champions he can snowball on. And one interesting thing why they ended up banning Lee Sin is Clear Love is not a major Lee Sin player during the regular season. It was not highly played whatsoever. Zed of course, the TF ban, though, which disappoints all the fans here from West Door. Cow gets taken out. A lot is left up to go through this game, actually. We get the tree for Korra. Maokai picked in. So Maokai has been picked by Koro twice already, because EDG has actually been blue side in every single game yeah. so far, and he's not been banned away. And Maokai in China is such a fantastic pick. Like, just in most regions, we do see Maokai as one of the top tier picks, but especially in China, because you are so strong in these team fights, because you can engage fights as well, makes you so, so strong. I actually feel like it's a bit of a mistake that Korra can get it once again, but I know they yeah. have to ban Zillion if they want to play Zed, so... Giving him yeah. the safe lane, EDG there, early game safety. That already goes to the top lane. We'll have to see what AHQ can keep putting together. Clear love and EU to pick. Based on the rest of the bans, they kind of had to give him Maokai. Okay. That's the problem, the right. rise is potentially more Oh, so more that's fearful. why I didn't ban Zed. I'm, I guess so. It's not a big pick in China, as you've pointed out many times. It's not, I mean, normally split pushing in China, it doesn't really happen. It's all about these team fights here, and Zed already has the problem. He's not super strong in team fights. He's extremely good in one on one and in split pushing, but it can be very hard to play team fights here. And you, I've never seen him play Zed no. before. 39 games, regular season playoffs and regionals, zero Zed picks. He's a utility laner. Is this you? Telling Westor, I can beat you on Zed, <laughs> even though I haven't played it oh. the entire season. Oh, he says, let's fight Blades for Blades. And actually, the Nidalee also getting locked in on the side of AHQ. First time through. Not a big surprise that we see the Nidalee against the Maokai because it's unbanned. It's something the Prides plays. Yes. As far as the Zed pick, though, you is known as a jack of all trades. As far yeah. as mid go, big champion yeah, pool. Yeah. And since they did burned that one ban on Lee Sin. This yeah. Zed pick is kind of like a pick as a ban, yeah. I think. 
more than anything else. But it will, I mean, it is a different playstyle for Edward Gaming because they are this slow early game, get into late game, we have like yeah. full scaling comms, normally hyper carry for Name, you have again tanky utility top laner and then of course we see like this Orianna mid lane for you so often where you scale into late game and you are so strong in these team fights. This is going to be a different playstyle because suddenly yeah. Yu is going to be a split pusher now and of course ring off a clear off and twitch login for Name, this is full pick comp. It you're at Worlds, you're going to have to bring this stuff out. You cannot play the same thing every time. If they know EDG is going to just want to sit in lane for late game and try to win a Baron fight, then you're going to be able to get under their skin. And wow, the Blitzcrank will get locked he in had to again. Do it. He had to do it one yeah. more time. I mean, again, it's, it's a snowball support. Get a few good hooks and suddenly you have a few kills for your team and he's looking great. You have Talon again, give him a few kills. Nidalee can solo carry games yep. by just split pushing. So AHQ doing the same as we saw against Samson White here. A lot of snowball potential, a lot of high damage champions as well. I mean, it is a David versus Goliath group. Although I do feel like this game is sneakily competitive. It's the bigger David and the slightly smaller Goliath facing up <laughs> against each other. So maybe it could turn in. Yeah, they picked a lot of champions that have the potential to take over a game. Yes, and again, EDG, different play style of different comp compared to what we normally see. Name on Twitch as well, it's one of his like best champions. But the way he actually plays it normally is he's the guy engaging team fights. Like he's in the front line engaging the fight. Now he's gonna have to one-on-one -on -one people and pick people off or be around you and then surprise them. The last time I saw him play Twitch, it was actually in this zillion Kale composition where he could jump up right next to someone. He can't do that now. No, he cannot. And it's time right now to do that Twitter thing. Share your predictions for who's going to take this game. Tweet hashtag EDG win or AHQ win to at LOL Esports. And we'll count up your vo votes shortly as we get into game. We can see their EDG on your screen, ready and raring to go with this composition they're about to kind of enlighten us with. We'll see. Whether or not you can become unstoppable. I mean, Azoriana was very good. Zed is a completely different animal right here. Oh, uh, we'll see it going into game now. We are onto the rift. EDG on your screen. Name on Twitch. You see him running out of the fountain. Good pickup as we see another Nidalee coming in today. Not too much play for Nidalee coming into the World Championships, but when he, or she, I should say, can be locked in, it is going to be in that top lane. Prides hits it up for this game. And ladies and gentlemen, we are on the rift. And this lane matchup here in the mid lane is very, very risky to play for the Talon because early on it can be very hard for Westor actually to get some poke onto you. You can constantly poke him with the Q and also if they do get an all in, suddenly you have the Shadow coming in some extra damage mm -hmm. for you here, which means Westor will have to actually jump him to out-trade him in damage. Right. And suddenly you are at risk of getting ganked. And Rengar isn't a fantastic ganker pre-6, but is a good counter ganker pre-6, or even rather threatening if Westdoor has burned all of his spells early on. So it's definitely a very, very risky lane if AHQ can't get control of the jungle. We do see him start with Flash, though, and his ward here, so going to be a lot of sustain for Westdoor in this mid lane. And he's going to need it in the start because you should be able to get a small CS lead and then once we get the ultis up here and Westor goes back, get his first item, we might see him do the same as we saw, uh, was it Pawn do in an uh, earlier game? Yeah, Pawn was just using his ultimate on cooldown on the talent. Right. That was against Noriana though to just continually push uh, Naru out of lane again and again. I don't think that's as easy yeah. against Zed. If you try to hop in with an ultimate on him, he's going to ult you right back. Could be a difficult situation. Well, Going to love to see the fight between these two in the mid lane, hopefully with a little bit of jungle pressure as well. Speaking of that mid lane fight, there's one last thing we're going to mention here, even though it won't come into play right off the bat. Double assassins, and neither one of them are bringing a knight against each other. So it's very much an offensive lane. Uh, and Name's doing his Twitch thing. Yeah, here we've we go. Seen this before. They don't have him hooked up with red buff this Great read time, by Westdor, honestly. But yes, beautiful read. You kind of walked forward a little too soon there. Yeah, but AHQ have done their homework here because when Name plays Twitch and there is a lane swap, AHQ started the lane swap themselves. Then he likes to go into this mid lane here, stealth up, get a few hits on the enemy mid laner. And that could actually be enough to simply win the mid lane for you. It's like we get another lane swap coming into this game. A great mark there. Keeps Prides pretty safe here as he has a bit of brush control for himself. FCZF doesn't want to have it or give him too much control over that. And we begin our laning phase. And Green Tea coming down here in a little bit to help out with the Prides. I still think it was a pretty good start there by AHQ. Because of the homework they did, 
Name was a little bit late getting to that bottom lane, and they did set up the lane swap. This allows Blitzcrank to potentially roam. Yeah, and also down this bottom lane, because Name and FCCF wasn't in the bottom lane to actually freeze it up early on, it's been pushing now up towards AHQ, so Pride should be able to pick He's up some farm. farm. That's exactly. really That's critical. There's no freeze because they went all in on the mid lane. However, because Blitzcrank has already shown in the bottom lane, Koro will be able to farm against Garnet Devil in that top lane Maokai Persolution. Simply trading then farm on the top laners, but you need to farm on Nidalee. That's the big deal about Nidalee when you do have these lane swaps. If she gets denied early on, she won't become the split pushing monster one on one. The fact she can actually get a lot of farm here is very important for a AHQ. Unfortunate ward that Nas is sitting on top of. However, his presence alone is enough to deny Koro here. Ward or no ward. Gonna have to play this one slowly. Kind of taunting him yeah. out there. At, at this point, Nas knows he's sitting on a ward, but he doesn't care because he's using it to deny experience and try and yep. give Garnet Devil a lead in that lane. Still a win situation for him, and he's gonna be able to hug this one out cleanly. Not knowing where Rengar is right now, though, this could get scary, but he's gonna be in base, so Nas has the good to go. But we have to talk about Klilov and his Rengar game we saw earlier. I wasn't too impressed either. I mean, Clearlock for me is a jungler who's extremely strong in team fights and in terms of like counter ganking. But he's a guy who prefers to just sit and farm. In that case, Rengar would benefit him. But the ganks he did try to pull off in the game earlier today where we saw Edward Gaming, they weren't very successful. And I wasn't actually too impressed by his Rengar. I gotta say, Rengar is probably the most polarizing champion depending on who plays it, right? We've seen Insect on it so far in this World Championship and it looked absolutely unstoppable. Yep. And we've seen some very lackluster Rengars. The champion is like that, though. He's very unforgiving for players who aren't exactly perfect on him or fall behind early. Let's see if Garnet Devil keeps himself out of a scary position here. Again, Clear Love coming in before six. They're trying to get something going here for Koro in the top lane. And Clear Love himself. Best thing about this is he's maxed up his ferocity. So if he lands that first spell, they can lock him down for quite a long time. And he is not oh, going, he's he knows not where he is. Wow. wow. Whoa! Okay, that was huge. Absolute that was huge. game sense. That's all it is. That is just a sixth sense of knowing where he could be. What? What a read. Beautiful. It, even if it was as simple as Koro not throwing the saplings, he is now holding the lane. There's too much freeze. Something, something alerted Garnet Devil. Crazy Probably play just there. Koro's play. That's one really underrated thing about solo laners working with their junglers, not having any tells in lane, not over baiting. At that point, it seemed like Garnet Devil saying, there's no way Koro would be playing this way if he didn't have backup, may as well check. Right, because Koro actually, just before Clearlove went to the top lane, he was trying to try and push out the lane one-on-one, -on -one. Mm. but as soon as Clearlove showed himself, or showed himself for Koro, he started backing away, was hoping for Garnet Devil to step forward and hit him. He was like, yeah, you know what, why are you suddenly playing so passive? Are you actually baiting me? End up checking the board. Doesn't take it as a sense of weakness, and he knows to keep himself safe. It's going to be a pickaxe buy for him on the first back. We're going to get these lanes swapped out. Looks like Prides is going to have himself a top lane now versus Koro. So pretty good lane swap here. Actually. Lane already too. No, but it's been a pretty good lane swap for HQ in the in the sense they got farm on Italy. Now to get the one on one. I just trying to chase for kill here. Force a flash at least. Absolutely forces the flash underneath the turret. Twisted and dance. Oh, that one more swipe. The th oh! oh! Coming out from Goro to stop the first blood. So close, but Price really knowing the damage here. Once you apply your pass with Nidalee, your Q all of a sudden does 33% more damage. Uh -huh. yep. And you're just jumping in there, almost killing him. And those Nidalee spears, though, they're so thin now. The slightest of side <laughs> right. steps by Goro right there. Save his skin. Save his bark, really. Gets out of that one alive. Seven minutes coming up on the clock. We'll see what Pryads can do to continue to mark his territory in the top lane. He does have it warded up. He'll be safe to return. Good invade now. No, or rather, not invade, but safety from Nas as you pushing up in mid. So, as we talked about like five minutes ago when we were setting up the lane mm. here in this mid lane, we talked about how you should be able to have the pressure. He's been doing a good job. 20 CS lead, forced West, West door back to base here. He did buy the Brutalizer now, so now we have to see if he wants to try and go aggressive onto you, but it's going to be extremely risky. Talon's not exactly a great pick against Zed matchup-wise. I mean, Crawley will definitely have this, his own version of how this mid lane matchup goes, but the Talon, in my experience in Vigilation, hasn't had huge amounts of success early against Zed. Westor is paying the price in the early game. 61 to 43, Brutalizer to Brutalizer, as they're going neck to neck in that lane. 
FCZF starting to get some wards onto the Dragon now as they prep the first objective. Just a 300 gold lead is what separates these two teams, and it's going to be quite a fight once we get the teleports coming in. And look at the first item here from Koro, just going straight for Ninja Tapi, because on the side of AHQ, yeah. it's all physical damage here. I mean, you can just stack armor all day long for EDG, and normally when we see these like full physical comps, they really fall off late game because there's going to be so much armor on the other side of the team that becomes so hard to actually kill the target. And that Maokai will be able to stack armor like no other. You can get late game. Plus, he kind of needed the Ninja Tabi to be able to run away from Prides a little bit faster. But they have to get to that late game for it to matter. Trying to close down on Clear Love, but he realizes people are exiting lane and he oh. needs to exit the jungle as well. Nice Arcane Smash on the jump in to stop the pounce. He throws a little short on the ball. And that was very important because once again he had to pass up on his head, he would take more damage, completely denies it, has it with with off, and back to just standard farming. Down his bottom lane. Nama has actually been uh, holding his own on this Twitch. Normally Twitch, I mean we did see the lane swap in the start. Right. But people don't like to 2v2 with Twitch. Well, it's very risky matchups. Blitzcrank as well, though, can show some weakness in lane, very so it's true. kind of balancing itself out unless Green Tea lands just the right hook. He's not having too much presence in that lane. They're interesting on both sides, though. Oh, they have He's a little fixed now. Oh, big level advantage. One missed hook means that pressure is down, though. So they got to make these count. Level six is hit. They're Give both the level five. So got it. Aqua right now. The silence comes in. Is it the death? Oh! to stop the flash in coming in from AHQ. FCZ after the plays. What a close move right there. Name, again an EDG member in the early game, gets away with a sliver of health. Eventually AHQ's gonna have to convert one of these kills or they're gonna get countered. I don't know if we're gonna see anything of a teleport here. No, it's no teleports coming in because the fight's actually on the teleport in the top lane. Another great arcane smash, but it was before the pounds. They start to execute and they will take him down. First blood for Nas. And they're going to try to put Garnet Devil in it. Actually, he is supposed to be safe from it. Green Team now trying to get the hook, but he gets hooked by FCCM. The cleanup in the bot lane coming in for EDG, and Clear Love gets two for himself. That is exactly the gank that EDG needed. Now Clear Love gets the two kills on Rengar to build whatever he wants. Plus, because of the double kill, they can take the Dragon afterwards. EDG has survived the early game and made it to the team fight phase, and they know and love with that play. We say a lot that EDG likes to wait, likes to wait. They can wait, but they're not afraid to make plays if they have a chance to. No, definitely not. And clear up here with the gang down in bottom lane because Nami was already taken so low from the fight beforehand. He knew that AHQ was going to stay at the tower and keep the pressure going. Walks in, gets Whoa. the laser, Westo is dead. That's oh, going to hurt. Oh, no. the Q. There's no pop. He got him. Whoa. Yep. And he pulls the R, the ultimate shadow back for safety. Remember that West Star picked his talent into Zed. He was already locked in by you, and he knew he was going to have a hard time early game. But now he'll end up giving a kill. Dragon as well for EDG. You have two kills on your Rengar. This split pushing machine you will become is going to be extremely scary, especially because Rengar can always join in, and suddenly it's 2v1. Yep. Straight up solo cannot happen, though, in this game, especially with West Star trying to carry HQ out of this one. I have to go back to that bottom lane, though, and one of the reasons Clear Love's gank was so effective. Oh. Nope. It's because when they went in, those flashes being burned preemptively were just so critical. It was just a perfect setup for a Clear Love gank, and that's why we said AHQ needs to be able to close out those kills or they're going to start getting countered. Ooh. Could have a big play here on Garnet. They actually pull an FCZF. He's going to take a few turret shots. No flash available because he gets silenced on that oh, one. Oh, Garnet Devil a little too far out. And somehow they change it in their favor for EDG once again. So it was actually a very good thing, uh, thing for FCZF to be hooked here because he didn't have to use the flash. He got behind Garnet Devil all of a sudden. There was no flash on him. He could just flame, land the hook, and get the kill here. So EDG really showing up in this early game and once again because they are playing a bit of a different comp we should expect them to be more aggressive in the early game and i talked about clear love's ringer before he's uh, looking pretty good so far <laughs> hey he had a little bit rough in the very early game but because his first ultimate was so well executed sometimes that's what make makes or breaks a rengar the first ultimate they use at level six we were talking about the rengar builds a little bit earlier he does start to stack up that flare 
He's not going to just sit on the Madrids for now. A lot of pressure towards this top lane. Nas throws down the ulti. He's going to get clear love. Clear love's got full stacks. Uses the ferocity. It looks like they're going to be going in. That's the death mark going down. And Nas hits the floor. Oh, oh, Prize oh. over the wall with twisted advance. An unfortunate event. And he goes down as well. From bad to worse is one of the biggest things we see right there. Clear love looked like he got a little bit caught out, but EDG as they always seem to do when we watch their games, collapse faster than the other team and turn every skirmish into a team fight. It is quite crazy, especially when they start getting ahead this far. You look at Nami to be the AD carry for the team. It's not, it doesn't have to be an AD carry or a carry for the team. Everybody else is doing a great job right now. Clear love coming up huge. We haven't even seen you start the split push yet if he wanted to. And it looks like EDG returns back to lane on both sides. Westor picking up blue buff here. Pink Ward's on the side of AHQ. Let's see where they start putting them. And look at the items here for Garnet Devil. Because he knows there's going to be so much action early on, seeing as EDG already has the lead and can just keep pressuring yeah. it, he actually decides to get a crit cloak, even though you normally want to have a BF sword and a pickaxe. But this time around, he didn't have enough gold for it. He figured, I need some items now. It doesn't really matter what I get, as long as I'm building towards the Infinity Edge, I have to get some items. He could have gone for a brutali Brutalizer as well yeah. and get a Ghostblade as the first item just to get some some power. I'm a little surprised he didn't actually just go for more long swords. The critical cloak is gonna need a lot of luck to try and pay off. Interestingly enough, we were checking a lot of rune pages early on in the game. So many players are running one yes. red crit rune. It's this incredibly widespread thing in jungle and at the AD carry position. And support. Zero. And support, yeah. Zero <laughs> on Janna. Runs uh, one percent crit and I've been looking for the jungle crits today. Uh -huh. I've seen it once. One, six yeah. games, and it was on a blue buff. Oh, man, this could be some pain going into Nas. He does have the mark over his head. He goes down from the death mark on you. Fight towards Koro in the top lane. Now it's not going to be any pressure from anyone here. These guys are the only teleporters, and they're going face to face. Looks like it's going to be an extended one with he the heals. He needs the lantern. There he there goes. Oh, they finally no. closed in. Jet, like you said before, EDG is always the one to close in first. Poor Prides. He is just one man against the world right here, and EDG is always bringing back up. Yeah, and EDG is just walking around in the jungle of AHQ. They've already warded up, so they could just move between these lanes. Whenever there's action in any of the lanes, expect multiple members of EDG to show up. All right, see if Green T can make a play coming up here. Looking for the hook. Looks like he's getting as close as he can. Koro on point with his sidesteps today. He's just going to take that one to the backside. Donatil with the revenge. Miss hook. Don't care. I'm just going to hit you with my ult. <laughs> EDG waiting. They know they're not hatching a ward on this one. Nas just on the other side. Whoa. He does get the alert system out. Nas gets hooked. He's going to get chewed up by clear love. And it looks like Prides tries to get back to lane. They do get out hey CCF. That's going to be a kill for Garnet Devil if he can finalize this one. Take not green tea. Crit. Take it. That's... Yep, the Ignite's going to be coming out, actually. Yes. Oh, it's green tees. West Door is in the fight. Nami gets out of this one alive. He can still be shooting from the outside, but he's way too low. Now goes the kill for Garnet Devil. They're going to be following green tee on overdrive. Will he be able to find one more? And it does not look like he will. So chasing. Slow. He might. He's got flash. Flash up. But this could be a tower as well. Ooh. I mean, a lot of kills all of a sudden for HQ here. Actually punishing EDG for being a little bit over aggressive. They were going for the kills. There's a little Zed in the bottom lane, however. It all started, though, with that green T hook over the wall. That was a very surprising move there by AHQ. They didn't really seem to be fighting back. And all at once, they catch EDG by surprise. If there's anything we learned yesterday for AHQ against Samson White, is that green T is the guy to set up all the kills on this blitz crank. He's not afraid to as well. He'll miss a few hooks, and he'll, he will keep going in on these fights. And the best part about it is AHQ usually has a few members there to fight it. The worst part about it is if they don't, EDG always gets there first. I mean, speaking of kill setups, they do have you on the run. Let's oh, see man. this. So where's the rest oh. of the EDG? How fast do they get here? That's one, missed one. This is going to absolutely turn into a complete dragon test. He should have flashed you and just knocked him up and then hooked him while he was in the, the air. Power fist. I mean, he would have gotten the kill. They could go for dragon then after and get some more gold here. So green tea. Should I do a flash for this one? Yeah, a little bit too much faith in his own skill shot skill right there. You can really see AHQ needs to make this one work though, but unless they get a pick with Blitzcrank, it's gonna be real tough for them to set this one up. I saw Clear Love at the very start of that last engagement, the level of damage he is putting out right now as a level 10 Rengar with damage items is rather remarkable. And my HQ has work control though. Monty said it on the desk. If you want to stop a split push as well, Rengar's a good one to do that. So Prides can't really get him himself into a situation to put AHQ back in the game. 
Could be difficult. This dragon still getting hit up half health. He's going to go back home and heal up. Green Tea could be looking for a hook from the side here, but he does not want the tree. Look at Westro here on the minimap. He's constantly staying at the mid lane. He wants to flank around ED, trying to get on Tsunami in the background. Here's the fight! Locks down Prides, gets hit up very early. No more heals can come from him. They shut down a bit of the utility, but EDG is now looking to keep themselves alive. To the outside goes Clear Love, but he's back into the fight with the rest of the team. Great focus coming around from AHQ, but they just cannot close down the health bars because EDG's got way too much damage. Where was the patience there by AHQ? They went when they did not have to go. They hooked a low health Korra, which just basically pulled them into the team because you could ex explode on them. And I believe Westor blew his full combo while sitting on the exhaust because he Probably, didn't want to yeah. wait longer time. And he couldn't really find a target. Again, he was staying no. in the middle. He wants to flank. He wants to get onto like Name or you maybe. Just try and burst one of the squishy targets. But he ended up actually walking in when the fight was almost over. Far and ahead already. Let's see this one more time. Green Tea didn't want that grab, but he was forced to pretty much make one. Yeah, Prides gets completely caught out while they're pulling the wrong target. This fight started on EDG's timeline. It was a really good box as well, but I mean, to burn three quarters of his combo while sitting on that exhaust, if he waits that long to make it in any way, at least wait until the exhaust is gone, and they could have gotten a few kills. Problem for him though was that his team were kind of already like either disengaged or already died, so he was gonna be the next target. So yeah, you can try and wait like for one more second, but do you really want to take the chance? Because if a hook had landed for FCCF, we would have been saying, why didn't he hold? EDG now two Blade of the Rune Kings finished to a point in the game where they love. Baron would be quite easy for them to do if they get the vision down necessary to get that done. Still looking for some type of carry from AHQ. Will it be the split push? Will it be Green T's grabs? Some have been missing, but when they've been hitting, he's not getting the people he wants. Yeah, the trouble with this as well is AHQ's running that full physical composition. They either needed mm -hmm. prides to get ahead enough to create a split push threat. That's not gonna happen now against that Glacial Shroud, Maokai, and the team fights, especially since Clear Love can pick up his armor now, are going to be a little bit difficult. Lots of cooldown in the builds coming from EDG here. They're looking to just keep these fights going. Turn them even more bloody. Pride staying on the back here. He does not want to get caught out if he's farming this one early. He's ready to just wait for it to come to the turret. So it seems like AHQ is ready to buy themselves some time, give themselves a window to farm back up here and get to a point where they can contest these objectives. And EDG at the moment just needs to make sure you has a one-on-one -on -one in the bottom lane and he can win it and then take a tower. So that's why you see four members from EDG moving to this top lane here, forcing AHQ as well to be there to defend. And then it's all about Westor against you down this bottom side. Westor's talent has been very underwhelming, I would have to say. And at this point, they're so far behind, especially his talent. He is an all-in champion right now. I don't see how he's going to find an effective use in this match, especially now that FCZF's exhaust is almost back off cooldown again. I mean, he used it so perfectly last fight. Face up the mountain as well for him. So you have the shield, you have the lantern shield, and as you mentioned, the exhaust. And why right in onto Westor. He does not have a chance to breathe on that one. FCZF looking to continue. Prides on to EDG. And it looks like Yu is going to stay alive on that one. Prides gets himself in out of the fight as Yu back to the team with a dark passage. And they somehow... Oh, oh. Man, yes, how do they continue these fights? Beautifully done. Left and right, it's just AHQ trying to find a way out of these fights. Four for one, you could really see EDG is just taking control of this game now. Every fight they find is a better one. They're the ones picking the fights against the team that needs to get picks. AHQ is just getting completely obliterated. Everything they focus just disappears in front of their eyes and then reappears as the engage happens from EDG. It's looked perfect so far coming from them. 3-0-4, unstoppable now coming out on Zed. He's doing quite well for himself. Again, he had a good matchup in the mid lane. He managed to win it. Even killed Westo one on one actually in the lane. Right. Getting a top tower now. Got a bot tower earlier as well. I mean, the split pushing and starting. And as long as the rest of EDG can make sure they have control of the rest yeah, of the match. Yeah. Let's just see it again. Though. Crazy. Yeah, flash jump there from Koro. Just setting up an easy kill for you. He actually took a fair bit of damage coming in there. And then Green Tea is the one who gets hooked to a retreating Koro who just ends up helping out with the initiation. At that point, EDG is just piling on everyone, collapsing and making a team fight. Although, that's a pick. 
Very nicely done. Something I'm that may need here. Late. So yeah, and again, it's also too early in the game to actually go for Baron here, even though you had, they managed to get a kill, and also it was just onto the support. So EDG managed to get a kill, but can't really do anything with it. Other than place a few wards. This is going to be tough if AHQ gets pushed back uh -oh. to their base. Oh my gosh, not even in the base right now, and it's going to be EDG that finds a pick for themselves. AHQ cannot let these things happen. That is a ridiculously fed Rengar. I think is what we saw right there. He basically soloed the solo laner right there in West Door from stealth. Look out. A little bit out of hand on that one. As I was just saying, it's going to be tough for AHQ once they get pushed back to the turrets. The wave clear is not immaculate, or not too great, I should say. And they're going to be pushed in quite hard. The Static Shiv trying to be built up by Garnet Devil to supplement that just a little bit. And again, right now, if EDG wants to, they can just split up in all the lanes. Send you in one lane. You have Koro as well. Like, put Koro in the bottom lane so you do have the Baron pressure where you can teleport up and join in. Have you push the top lane. Yeah. And then you put Nami in the mid lane. He push out the wave. And then him and Clearlove together can just go to either top lane or the bottom lane and just find a pick. I mean, you can dive people. You can find them in the jungle because you have all the wards placed. There are so many possible picks for EDG here. You got a lot of options when you got a 10,000 gold. And it works out, especially when you're so far ahead. If Clear Love doesn't get the engage he wants, he just finds a dark passage from SCZF. They're out, and they try it again. So I'm just going to think about the group as a whole right now, because yeah. everyone expects Samsung White and EDG to make it out of this group. AHQ needs to pull off an upset to be able to come back out of this one. They're going to be sitting at 1-2. Based on what happened against Dark Passage, they're probably going to beat them again. Right. Uh, how the thing that AHQ needs to be asking themselves during this game is where are the windows for us to beat EDG the next time they play? Because that's all they need if they want to be able to come out of this group. Slow pushes into that bottom lane now. Trying to get this down so EDG can get themselves a nice Baron attack. Oh my gosh, on to West Door. Oh. Definitely going to have to be a better lane matchup if they want that face off to go any better, Jack. This is going down way too in favor of EDG. A good pick up there by HQ, though. Right, but it's also just because everything has gone horribly wrong for right. West Door in this game. Just I mean, it's just getting forward. worse and worse. Zed can just snowball out of control here. EDG, not able to get a tower. Oh, Green T with Flash. Yeah, as you said, just a horrible game for West Door. Everything going against him. He got chased down. They were able to collapse, but they still lost a lot of turret pressure. To get back to their windows of opportunity, though, they still have some individual playmaking, but you can see they might actually be pushing a little bit too hard and going a little bit too far in that sense. I think you need a playmaker. Don't make every single player the guy who would try and solo carry the game because then you don't actually have any team cohesion, and that's really hurting them in this game, I think. And it's really been a, a problem if we look at like picks and bans, how every single team going into the games against AHQ can say at least two of our bans will go to West Door. Mm -hmm. And then if you pick the third, like Assassin out of Zed, mm -hmm. TF, and obviously Fizz, I don't know if we should call TF so much of an Assassin, right. but still, one of his like main picks where he can actually carry games, it becomes impossible because the rest of the members on AHQ, they don't pull any bans, at the moment at least. Right. So there's too much focus on Westor, meaning he has to pick something like a Talon and just try and carry the and game. And was he trying to replicate today, right? He's only really played Talon once in the 23 games of their season, so to come out and say, maybe we can just keep that pressure on using my ultimate every minute, did not really work out for him. So they're definitely reaching and grabbing for a few of those things, like you said, that they're looking for. Oh, here we go, another Rengar. He showed that pink ward. <laughs> <laughs> it's done for. I actually do have to point out, though, you, again, because they played so many games during the regular season, and he just never played the Zed. It's that's yeah, that's who showing the depth of his actual champion pool because he's played yeah. very well on Zed. Oh, he's been he's been great to be honest, but it also shows how we had some time between the last few games of the season before World Start where people could start picking up new champions, mm -hmm. and Zed, everyone knew he was going to be a big pick coming into into Worlds and. 
when you have a mid laner like you and just when you're on like these professional teams, you have to be able to play like these top tier picks. And it's a level of training. I mean, we even saw Dyrus pick up Rumble heading into the World Championships right. as well. These teams did have a lot of time to prepare. And here we go, fight for BDG. They get a nice catch. Nas locked up pretty much. He's forced to jump out of the fight. Everything happening in defense here for AHQ as they start to go down. EDG closing in and the stranglehold now up down. They get clear love this time. He will be going down to the turret. They are forced out of their bases. EDG kind of takes their side of the map over. They're actually trading one for one here and a lot of damage onto EDG so they won't really be able to push anywhere once again. A hook from Green T onto the tower. A pretty slick hook as you said right there. The main reason that one turned around. Clear Love, because he was getting so far ahead, continued to build those damage items, meaning when he did get pulled into the turret, he was able to get bursted down pretty quickly. So a little sigh of relief from AHQ there. That was a great ultimate by Westor. He did yeah, a exactly. ton of damage to the team. It's the main reason EDG had to back out. This could be one of those windows. Give them a time to breathe. AHQ could possibly set up their wards. They definitely have to clear the pl plethora around Baron Pit right now that EDG has. So if AHQ can get themselves into position, you can definitely start to whittle away at this gold lead that EDG has right now around 11,000. It's going to be tough. We still have a lot of time to go in this game, according to what stands in the base of AHQ. And as long as they can keep wards in their own jungle around this Baron here, yeah. and also keep the Baron warded, of course, they might actually be able to buy some time, but if you do look at their comp and what we talked about earlier, earlier with the full physical, you're against a Maokai, again, a Ringo, fantastic mm -hmm. late game, you're not really going to outscale, and this Nidalee pick has not been able to do anything in a one-on-one -on -one because Pride has been so far behind. So AHQ just have to try and go for these picks and they need to hope that EDG is going to play like over aggressive. But they're normally a team who is extremely strong in the late game and won't make any mistakes in the late game. Right, even if they're looking like they're doing a big dive, which they're willing to do, it's usually much more calculated than the other teams in China for sure. That's definitely their big strength. Even vision control. They definitely bought a ton of wards yesterday in the game against White. This Find one, the however, they're going to be walking through that one ward. I now it's got to run Kill that pink ward again. Yes, two ultis, two pink wards. <laughs> That's efficiency right there. Two ultis, three pink wards, perhaps. Uh, they need to right. get a little bit better vision control. They realize that one gets spotted out. They do have the four sweepers, but they need to get some more forward pink wards, actually. Uh, FCZF probably needs to move his a little bit further up if they want to get full control and continue to press around this Baron pit. You can see they're pretty risk averse with the objective fights. They want it out of the objective. They want their pick. Why don't they just go top lane at the moment? I mean, they have wards to spot AHQ. The top lane is pushing in, and this mid lane wasn't pushing. If you go like 20 seconds ago, they're going to rush straight for top lane, picked up a tower instead, starting the Baron now. They're forcing members. AHQ into a team fight. Blitz in Italy without a setup isn't necessarily a great fight. They still need to get a catch of some type, though. It's on FCZF since Clear Love's ultimate is down. FCZF thrown on face of the mountain. He thought he was going to be grabbed by Green Tea, but he's not liking to grab any of the non-priority targets right now. I think he's got it in his head that he's zeroing in on Name, trying to make sure Clear Love gets locked out and really peel for Garnet Devil here. What will they be able to do? It's looking pretty grim. And they need ulti ready for Clear Love first. I mean, we've seen two being used already. Only managed to get some pink wards, couldn't actually get on to anyone else. AHQ and because there's no cooldown reduction for Clear Love, it does take a while for him to get ults ready. Now it's up and they're going for it. The teleport coming in from Koro and he gets right onto Garnet Devil. That's going to be a lockdown from you and they just surprise AHQ by showing up behind him and starting the party. Just a devastating fight. Home guard teleports. That's one way of getting him behind the team. They had the war control. HQ is trying to control the Baron and they got wrecked. Over the wall we go. Clear Love says, hang on. I'm going to try. Make sure nobody else comes from this side. I'm looking for Westor. West We're West looking West for Nas right now. 1v5. Yeah, like they get him. Westor okay, goes in a little alive. early. Yeah. Nas on the other side. Is he going to try to do much? It looks like he's just going to hang out on the red buff for now. No vision to see. Again, you have Exhaust here. You have the Lantern Shield as well. You have Face of the Mountain. It is so hard for Westor to actually find a target. They're all <laughs> trying. <laughs> Everyone on HQ is trying their own version of the 1v5 right now. They're all thinking Pentakill. It's called Gladiator. But it doesn't quite work out that way. Go in and see if you can come out alive. That's so far, not working. Speaking. Absolutely. Total desperation. Trying to do what they can. The timers 
still relatively low, but it's really not something that's in their favor. They're still dead. It's still EDG picking things up, and they are starting to run amok on the map. Let's see this one more time. Whoop. It was that fast. Look at that. that was the forest. Anyway, here's the fight. <laughs> and it's just a beautiful setup with the teleport in behind them. And as soon as you lock down just one target, the yep. rest of EDG can follow up and get all the kills. First pick, Maokai. Definitely paying off for them right here. It is such a good pick for EDG. They love to team fight. You get hard engaged. And Koro is playing it really well here. So I feel like, again, going into the later stages of the group stage now, I mean, you probably have to consider banning it. And that's something that we came up with when we were watching Koro, when we you know, did our research, is that great comms and his synergy in team fights is ridiculous. He said, guys, I'm coming in, and I'm going to be right behind them. I love the synergy in EDG's item builds right now as well. Triple right. Rand wins Omen against the full physical team. Also, triple Ghost Blade because they want to take down those targets. I love you so much, Green Tea. Oh my god. <laughs> Yet another one. I mean, that was beautiful. It was a really nice hook, knowing where they're going to be coming for the setup. The Boom Boom Blitzcrank getting in the good shots when they count, but man, is it too little, too late. EDG is looking to pressure this bottom turret now with Baron on hand. It's going to be pretty tough for AHQ to defend. And this game, I mean, even though EDG has been so far ahead, they've not been able to take down the towers, really, because, again, they don't have a comp to siege. Yeah. Twitch is probably the worst ADK of one of the worst <laughs> to do it. Zed, of course, you can't really do it with him. Which means EDG has just been looking for the picks, and every time they got a pick, either they could... I mean, they've been able to take, like, one or two towers off it, yeah. but that's been it. Well, they've definitely been able to take a substantial gold lead as well and the objectives that aren't tur turrets. Many dragons, many barons, many blue buffs. Pink wards. Yeah, many pink wards. I think it's a matter of time. They have a whole bunch of armor. For sure. They're just building up there. <laughs> Two frozen hearts. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, frozen heart on FCC, yeah. Not gonna, not gonna be doing uh, too much damage to either the top lane or the support right now. And then you have everybody diving in, pretty much zeroing you out instantly. They're not even building armor past those randuins. They don't need it. So far ahead in this game right now. 62.8 thousand to 46. This is where they need to close it out though. Teams this far ahead need to start definitively closing out games because they get caught like this. Can EDG close in though? Maelstrom keeping a lot of damage off of Coral right now. He is huge. A very, very scary tree right now. I mean, that's what happens when a Maokai can itemize only one main resistance because he's such a tanky beast already. You give him more efficiency with those tank stats and he will become that big. Garnet Devil only facing you on that one. Keeps himself alive, has to flash out of that so it's not gonna be as safe the next time they get the engage. FCZF on the front line takes a bit more damage than he wanted to. But Koro, Koro can stand there. So he's gonna be the front line for the team, taking the culling as well. That'll be regened nicely by Baron. Remember, there's no ult for you here, so if AHQ wants to fight, this is the time. Just try and go for it. Hope the Zed can do anything in the fight. In the end, though, DDG managed to disengage. The ult is ready fairly soon, and then it's up to them to go for the kills. Green T does have his flash up. I'm ready for the hook. Just wait for it to come in. I mean, what are you going to hook him into? Your inhibitor? The inhibitor's not going to help. Price gets caught. Gotta try something. The next in the Nexus turrets now. He does get Coro, though. Not the one he wanted. And it looks like they're going to be able to get through inhibitor. That is you all the way to the back line on the Garnet Devil. And he does get the E hit as well to add the extra damage. Cancels him out. And it looks like it's going to be the Nexus for EDG. When it's all told, even though they weren't able to siege that well, it's still just 36 minutes. They definitely got a whole bunch of kills. And they close out AHQ. 28 to 10. 36 minutes into the game. Up Beautiful game for Clear Love on Rangar. And it's going to be EDG taking down AHQ. And in this game, we actually have to look at the early game and say there was a lot of misplays, of course, from AHQ. The double flash down the bottom lane, yeah. set up the game from Clear Love. And then once we had all these aggressive plays in like the first five minutes, it seemed like AHQ suddenly realized, oh, we are playing too aggressive. Let's just be more, like, play more safe. So when they actually had chances to do something, they didn't go for it. And AHQ had the game under control until that bottom lane misplay, right? They were not able to close the kill. Clearlove capitalized. And once Clearlove got going, he's such a good team fight initiator and pick catcher once he gets a little bit of farm that he was able to end the game on that way. Right. And again, I'm also just I'm thinking back to Green T when he's chasing you and Zed, he has the chance to actually 
flash, knock him up, kill him, get a dragon for his, for his team and almost even out the gold. That's where you have to pull the trigger if you want to come back in a game like this. And that's where a team like AHQ, a team like Dark Passage, they don't have the quick decision making yet or they don't know exactly, okay, now is the time we have to strike if you want to come back. Otherwise, we see, I mean, we saw what happened. EDG, EDG just kept getting more and more yeah. gold, getting more and more picks and... We also okay. realize EDG is damn good at dodging skill shots all day. This oh, could have been a completely different game if 50% of those hooks hit for Green T, because they were on point when he was in position. It would have been Twitch a few times, and then even when Koro was weak enough, it, he would have gone yeah. down. Think back to the very beginning of that game, the level 4 Nidalee coming into the level 5 Maokai. Oh. The last little sidestep oh, on yeah. that hook. If that hook lands, Nidalee completely takes control of that lane. Yeah. It sucks clear love up away from the bottom lane. It allows Garnet to be able to get going. Yeah. Maybe it unlocks Westor a little bit in team fights. The skill shot dodging, pretty big. Definitely a, a winning factor in that game for EDG to come out. When we saw their play style of slowness, again, the way they do it, different from Chinese teams, but not afraid to execute when they need to, as we saw Clearlift do in the bot lane. And the thing is now also, if you are in group B and you're like TSM, your Royal Club, yeah. and you're looking at EDG and Samson White here, and you see how dominant they are against these teams, it is going to be pretty scary going into the quarterfinal because obviously number one from Group B is going to face number one, uh, number two from Group A here, and yeah. as it looks right now, EDG is going to be number two unless they can beat Samsung White next week. Yeah, oh, I mean, sorry, we're, we're we're at that halfway point right now, so I think right. specifically Group B has a really interesting road ahead. Starhorn Royal Club, even though they are three and zero, they had two rather close games. Right, they probably should have lost against TPA, yeah. and they were. The closest to losing against SK is of a lot of the teams, so it's not like it's set in stone up there. And even though EDG was very good in their showing against AHQ here, I don't think they were nearly the same level that we saw Samsung White. So I think Agreed. that Group B yeah. definitely has so much importance on the number one seed as we move towards the next two days to close out the groups. I have to, I'm 100% agree, of course, yeah. yep. because facing Samsung White, the team everyone was talking about and hyping up and saying this is probably the best team in the world. As long as they dodge Samsung Blue, they can take take the whole tournament. So getting the number one, it simply means Group B is going to be so exciting tomorrow. And now for EDG and Samsung White, it's just all about finishing up the last few games against Dark Passage and AHQ, and then it's all about the big final, which is going to be in two days, I believe. I said tomorrow, that's wrong. Yeah. In two days, and then with right. the big final. Well, EDG came in saying that that wasn't their focus for Samsung White, and they've started to, you know, get the wins they need in other spots in the group. So that's somewhat right. working out for them. EDG has been able to secure themselves a yeah. pretty good position. No, they were not able to beat White, but they had very convincing victories against the other two in the group. That's all they really came in here looking to do is make it into the quarterfinals. The problem is, however, if Royal Club secures number one mm -hmm. in Group B, and we have EDG against Royal Club, it's actually not a matchup which is too much in favor of EDG because Royal Club is so damn good at like getting this early lead and snowballing right. it, which is where EDG sometimes tend to uh, be weak in the early game, and it could be a very risky matchup. Well, what else can we expect from EDG now? We see you coming out with Zed for the first time ever and playing it very well. So what else do they have? It seems like they're really versatile. Definitely the most versatile team in China. I mean, that's the reason they were able to win, win both the spring and the summer splits. They play controlled, yeah. and they adapt to the situation more so than anything else. And Name, a three-title LPL winner, he knows what it's all about to be on the stage. So these guys really got it going. For an insider's view on that match, let's send it over to Shox, who is on the stage with a member of the victorious Edward Gaming. Thank you very much, guys. And I am indeed standing by with the AD carry, Name. First off, you guys built up a strong advantage here very early. How come it took kind of long for you guys to close this game out? Uh, 就是有機器人做的英雄如果你追得很深會導致很危險這種 Okay, so basically we have one um, team fight that we lost on the top lane and we died around 3 to 4 players and I'm not so sure but for that uh, fight we actually um, get them um, that HQ got some advantage, advantage back like so 
we weren't like so sure about our economy V, so we weren't able to do some risky moves like diving. So it kind of make it long. I see. Well, you had a great game. How have you managed the high expectations that were surrounding your play here from both the Chinese scene and the foreign scene? Uh,大家都知道，其实EDG是很以中国一线战队。那呃，中国的呃，不管是观众或是队伍的，对你们很大的支持。那你想必也会有很大的期待。那面怎么样面对中国跟来自海外粉丝观众的期待呢？呃，
taking games off these top teams. There is really no surprise here. Exactly what people thought would happen ended up happening. And I actually want to bounce off what you said a second ago, quick shot about uh, these teams hiding their picks. Because actually back at All-Star 2013, Rapid Star, I believe, was the All-Star mid laner for Korea. And he, started, he played mid lane Kennen every single game just to make teams think he cared about Kennen so he could bring out his real champions when they played the Chinese All-Star team in the finals. It was ambition, but yeah. Ambition, ambition. sorry, yeah. thank you. The other. Now, let's talk Group B, because this is the inter interesting one for me. Star Horn Royal Club, 3-0. Team Solomon, 2-1. TPA, 1-2. SK Gaming, 0-3. SK gets Sven Skarin back tomorrow. TPA and TSM going to be looking at who's going to get that next matchup uh, uh, between them. And there's a possibility that that second place could be up for grabs. Yeah, there is an outside shot that we have a three-way tie for second place if SK Gaming can win all three of their games and we can see TPA kind of take out TSM. Now, realistically, I think SK Gaming is probably going to lose to Royal Club, but they can still play the spoiler here. And that's what's so interesting is that this now full power SK Gaming could in fact knock somebody out of that second seat. Well, there's actually two ways it can go. They can still lose to Royal Club. They just need TPA to beat TSM. Just kind of flip the group around. You've got a three-way tie. Or yes, they beat Royal Club. Then they're actually in control of their own destiny. They can go three and three and just be a likely second place auto birth. It's going to be an interesting one to talk about. Probably what's your take after seeing TPA, TSM, SK? Is there room for these upsets? I mean, we still feel Royal Club are the favorites, but yeah. they were pushed super hard today by an SK squad with a sub. Uh, it has been touched on a lot these last couple of days, but I think Svitzeren coming back into the team is going to kind of light a fire. They're going to look at their losses and go, we could have won that game. And I think when he comes back in, they are going to kind of bring it back in the group stage. TPA, on the other hand, I don't see them really clawing back in this stage. And TSM, I think, is just going to keep getting stronger. I want to ask Crepo, after seeing TPA and some of the mistakes and problems they've had, full strength SK with Sven, who scrimmed with them in Korea, will they be able to punish TPA's mistakes? I think definitely SK will rise above TPA. Um, I think once they got Lee Sin away from wins, it just, it just all started like crumbling down. Um, TPA just yeah, they have they have some good elements in there, but we saw you know their bot lane just didn't punish, uh, the the or didn't uh, use the windows of opportunity they had. Mm -hmm. Their mid game like calling wasn't good. They're like some rotations were good, but then so every like something was lacking every time. And I think SK co will come back with a new passion. Like they want to perform. They want to show the world, hey, we made it to Worlds for a reason. If you go back to European playoffs, they actually were a good team strategically. Um, they have this very like unique style that Monty highlighted as well. And I think Svenskren is definitely um. Uh, gonna come to play if his is uh, like mental capacity is stable because a lot of, a lot of things happen you know if he's coming yeah. in calm and and the crowd is not gonna be against him too much then maybe but it'll be a, a factor I, I like the fact you do highlight Monty talking about SK because before the suspension you actually had SK to make it out the groups after seeing the teams having some insight and knowing some of the mathematical possibilities if you were given the chance to change your prediction of the top two in this group, do you think SK would feature? Uh, n I mean, no, not now. They've lost too many games. I mean, I didn't. Ha I, if I were to say they were going to get second place in the group, I wouldn't have thought they would have beaten Starhorn Royal Club at all. Uh, so, assuming that they're going to lose again, the best they can do is two and four. Um, yeah, and then they rely on TPA to beat TSM, which again seems like it's not going to happen. You guys all predicted. Uh, TSM to win the matchup the first time. Looks like it's not going to change again. So yeah, mathematically, and again, assuming TSM beats TPA, then there's no chance for SK. Well, we'll see how that works out. And it's, uh, I don't actually know when their game is. It's coming up fairly soon. Regardless, yeah. we'll get to that a little bit later. It is now time for a lesson in the League of Legends etiquette, the jungler style, in a segment that uh, we introduced yesterday. And it has got a lovely title of thank you very much. First one is going to be SK versus TPA. This was a tower dive Freak, do you want to talk me through this one? It was pretty heavy. Yeah, so they try really hard. It's the Flash EQ ulti. Uh, right here, we don't need the Flash crescendo from Sona, but this is actually why I like champions like Jarvan, is you can just force kills. Yeah, that's and for sure. sometimes you snowball an Ari because of it. Worked out very well. We got another one. This is going to be a very aggressive Rengar dive from Edward Gaming. Clear up. He's going all in. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing they can do. They cancel Absolute Zero there with Janna. Kog'Maw's not being touched. I mean, at this point, the game was very far ahead. You saw Oriana cutting down immediately as well. It is basically cleanup. They were even contemplating on teleporting. It was like, yeah, let's just have three people die instead of four. So at this point, the game's over. But I, I do like the Rengar ganks, um, just well executed. Really, really strong uh, Rengar play from Clear Lab. This is a nice one from Amazing. 
because he's going to set himself up to counter gank wins and what well, ends up being a uh, no gank you in return. Monty? Yeah, and the no gank you here is really a mistake from TBA. Actually, they had just seen Amazing clearing out the pink ward behind the red buff, and so they should have known he was topside. Yeah, somebody needs to give Pro uh, Clear Love another high five because just more kills being racked up for this Rengar play. This is kind of what happens when you've got an over aggressive team. AHQ, I still don't love the Blitzcrank pick for them, and I think they tried a little bit too hard to make plays when I think they could have relied a little bit on individual skill and less on cheeky, really risky picks. It was good spacing uh, from Name on Twitch, though. He definitely dodged that hook. If, if he got caught there, it could have been like a one for two, but he just, he knew he knew he was safe, you know, he knew his team could clean up and just a well set up gank. Rengar and Thresh is so annoying to play against, especially when you play something like Blitzcrank, where you're, you feel forced to make the move, so you'll constantly be walking forward, and then you realize, oh, they have an invisible jungler, maybe I made a small mistake. Yeah. I think the Blitz pick goes back to they're not confident as a team versus the others. They kind of think they have a disadvantage skill-wise, so they're going for this blitz pick that not many people practice against. Well, we'll see. It didn't work out today, unfortunately. Yeah. Guys, tomorrow we will be bringing you another full day of matches, and here's who's going to be going head-to-head. -head. Up first, it will be David and Goliath, the Samsung White versus Dark Passage, followed by SK Gaming at full strength, taking on the Starhorn Royal Club. Then HQ Esports Club will battle it out with Samsung White and will round out the six-game day with SK Gaming versus the Taipei Assassins. Those matches will begin on Saturday at 2 a.m. Pacific, which is 11 a.m. Central European Summertime. I'd like to thank our special guest analysts for sharing their expertise with us today. And for myself, the casters, the entire world's broadcast team, thank you so much for watching. We will see you back here tomorrow. Yesterday was epic, but I think today is going to be just as amazing. That's going to be Gilius that picks it up, but that's going to take a very low in the pin here. Can he find a jump back in, but it's TPA coming out on top. Have they got the damage? They damn well have. And now they fight oh. down as well. So low, but it's from the right. Oh. With the TP! By the way, this guy is ah. insect, so flash before he can insect you. <laughs> Jez has locked up the ultimate coming out of Candy Panda, but he's just forced back onto the mountain and taken down by Uzi! He is just that strong! This is going to be some amazing matches, and it's already started the day off. Crazy. A little bit of brush control is going to be good for this one. Double kill coming in for Imp. He keeps the shot coming. The triple kill for Imp. Looking for the quad. Oh, yeah, they want to give him the And they are going to get it. Yeah. The Penta kill to right. come in right, for right, Imp. Penta kill. World Championship 2014, my bro. Jay gonna be looking for a Solar Flare. It locks down Dyrus, but he's already got the Equalizer damage out. Zanya's across the board. You're looking good, gentlemen. That's gonna be a lockdown from you, and they just surprise AHQ. And it looks like it's gonna be the Nexus for EDG.